Hello again, fellow audiophiles. I am Wave Theory, and I have a fun one for you today, and that is the ZMF Atrium. Dynamic driver, open back around the ear, full-size headphone from ZMF that lists for a starting price of 2,500 US dollars and goes up from there with a variety of options. This was sent to me by a friend of the channel, and so I have no affiliation with ZMF, so all of the thoughts you are about to hear are mine and mine alone. So before we jump into that, here we go with the shameless self-promotion. Hey, thanks for watching this video. Please remember to hit that like button, and if you haven't, please subscribe. Also, I have a Patreon set up so that you can help support me on a monthly basis, and I've set up a PayPal donation so that you can help me out in that way too if a monthly dis a subscription does not make sense for you. Links for all of that, including the benefits, in the description below. Please check those out. All right, on with the show. All right, so the ZMF Atrium. Again, a open back dynamic driver headphone from ZMF. This particular unit happens to be in the Koa Limited Edition wood. Okay, I mean, and it's, I mean, in typical ZMF fashion. Like, I mean, it's just absolutely beautiful with the wood and the trim work and the, the grill material here just, I mean, aesthetically, ZMF just always manages to hit it out of the park, right? I mean, absolutely gorgeous, all of that. So that's that's all here. Okay, so the atrium is, as of the filming of this video, and I filmed this in late September of 2022, as of the filming of this video, the atrium is kind of a co-flagship in ZMF's line, along with the Verite both the Verite open and the Verite close, okay? Right at that $2,500 starting price point that goes up whether you choose different wood types, different uh, chassis material, like do you want aluminum? Do you want magnesium? Do you want a little bit different grill? Okay, prices go up from there. All right, um, now that is soon to change because the Caldera is right on the horizon and that I am pretty sure will be ZMF's new flagship whenever it actually hits the market. To my knowledge, as of today, it has not yet, but I imagine that it will be up very soon, okay? So hopefully I will get one of those two at some point, but for right now, we're talking about the ZMF Atrium, okay. The driver in this is a biocellulose driver, which is very similar to what ZMF has used in their O-Tour and Icon, but these biocellulose drivers are what they call atrium tuned. So they are tuned specifically for this headphone. They have a rated impedance of 300 ohms, which is very common for ZMF. So um, most of their dynamic driver options are right there at 300 ohms. And then it has a somewhat middling high um, sensitivity rating of about 96 decibels per milliwatt. So the drivability here is reasonably friendly. I would say that if you have any experience driving a Sennheiser HD600 or HD650 slash HD6XX, the drivability of these in terms of how hard or easy they are to drive is very, very similar to that line of headphones. The rated mass starts at uh, 490 grams. It goes up or down about 30 grams, depending on what grill material you choose or whether you choose the uh, aluminum chassis, which is, or excuse me, the magnesium chassis, which is a little bit lighter and all of that. So call 490 a starting point, plus or minus 30, depending on what options you want. All right, it comes stock with what they call the perforated universe pads. These are lambskin here. Um, as far as I know, you can see that they have the perforations on them. These are the, the stock pads, as far as I know, on the Atrium line. When you buy this headphone from ZMF, you get the option of a second set of pads that come along with it. Um, in the package that was shipped to me, I got these, which I think are their uh, BE squared suede. This material right here is suede. It's a tough thing when you get sent a ZMF headphone secondhand. Okay, um, these were bought used by the friend of the channel who sent me these and he just had them sent here. Um, the other pads are not always labeled, so I do my best there, but these are some kind of a suede here. Somebody else who's more familiar with ZMF pads can maybe be name them just by looking at them. Anyway, 
that came with this set, but you have options on that there. Okay. Um, but I mean, what else do you really say about ZMF? Like the packaging, you get this, they call it the seahorse case. I don't know why it's a seahorse, but this hard plastic, okay. Uh, carrying case here with these wing like clamps on the sides, keeps everything safe. All of that. You get, you know, the ownership card that comes in there. You get this little info card about what you just bought and the pad types and welcome to the ZMF family and all of that on the back of it. Okay, a bunch of uh, other information, user manual and that sort of thing in this red envelope pouch thingy. Okay, the uh, cables that came with this one, I really did not use much. We have, um, you can see there's a fair amount of memory here. This is one of the stock cables. I think it's just the OFC kind of thing. You can tell I didn't use it much. I used my uh, Forza uh, HPC Noir, Noir Hybrid HPC for this, but the stock cable here, this one's XLR. Okay, the dual mini XLR, just like Odyssey on the headphone end. You can see a fair amount of memory here in this cable. I didn't use it much. This one also comes with a, a ZMF quarter inch adapter here with more of a, a nylon coated wire there again. I really didn't use these. I used that Forza that I just mentioned. ZMF's cables tend to be fairly decent as far as stock cabling goes though. So there is that. All right. Um, so yeah, I don't know what else you really want to say about build uh, as far as ZMF goes because I mean, they are absolutely gorgeous. They are works of art every time. They uh, come with a fairly high pride of ownership as a result of that. And that's a very real thing. Now, in terms of comfort on my head, like it's a little bit heavier than average headphone, but the way it fits with the headband and the, you know, the sort of suspension strap system in there, like it just, it's comfortable. Never had any comfort issues at all wearing it for a while. Um, even though it's open back, it doesn't sound all that open. Like uh, it's muffling my voice a little bit as I speak and that sort of thing. So there is a little bit of attenuation, but they are open back. So you will hear uh, sound leak out quite a bit. All of that. Now, onto the sound. I did most of my listening with these stock Universe Lamb perforated pads. I did a little bit with these. I will comment on the sound changes here in a little bit. Um, signal chains real quick that I, I should name. I ran these off of four different amps, uh, I think, primarily. So uh, the main ones that I used would be my KN HA1A Mark II tube amp, because these are 300 ohms, makes them very tube friendly. Um, I used my Violectric HPA V281. Um, and then for a time, I had the Ferrum Oren Hypso stack in, and I tried these on there. And then I also have in currently the SPL Fonitor X. Tried these on there a little bit as well. Uh, for DAX, it was primarily my Berkeley Alpha Series 2, which is fed by a Singer SU2 USB bridge, or a, um, I use the shit by Frost 2 slash 64 uh, a fair amount there as the DAX feeding any of those amps just named. Okay, so let's, yeah, let's dive into the sound then. For a little bit of context, I was, I listened to these and, and started listening to them proper for review purposes right after I wrapped up my listening to the Odyssey MM500. And that is interesting for a couple of reasons. One, it struck me immediately how much more natural sounding the mid-range was in this headphone as compared to the MM500. It has a much more tonally balanced mid-range compared to that headphone, okay? Um, and then also I was impressed by the amount of particularly mid-bass impact, the physicality, the, you know, that punch in the mid-bass I was kind of floored by that because the Odyssey MM500 is no slouch when it comes to punch, slam, bass physicality, that sort of thing. But this was hitting much harder than I expected it to. And so that those two things kind of stood out to me right away. 
I'll unpack those a, a little, each a little bit further as we get in here, but those are just two early observations that just jumped out for me coming from the, again, the MM500. Now, the overall tuning here is very reminiscent of the Sennheiser HD650, where it is still fairly neutral, but it tends towards a little bit of warmth. Now, it is a little bit brighter than the 650, so there's a little bit more treble energy there, and I think there is a little bit better bass extension than the, the 650 gives. Now, it's still not great in the bass extension. It doesn't reach all the way down you know, in a linear manner, like a lot of the planars that are up, you know, 2500 5, $2, to $3,000, you know, similarly priced units can do, or even, you know, fifteen to, to $1,500 planars, okay? It's like, it's not going to have that kind of extension, but it's going to be more extended than an HD650, okay? Um, and then the same goes up top too. I mentioned that it's a little bit brighter. I think that's because it has a little bit more treble extension, just a little bit more air. Now, it is not a treble focused headphone in that regard. So if you are treble sensitive, this could be a good option for you because there's not a ton of high frequency energy. It doesn't sound dark, but it's just not like the focus from a frequency response standpoint much at all. Okay. Um, and then also, so it, just, it ends up being, it, it accentuates the mids a little bit, not because they are elevated, but just because that extension, both high and low is not super outstanding. It ends up being just a little bit more mid centric in its presentation for the most part. Now that works because the tonal balance through the mid-range is fairly decent. There is a little bit, I want to say, of a peak somewhere around 2.53 kilohertz-ish, somewhere in there, which gets in the way just a little bit. It's not severe in any way. It gets in the way just a little bit with some really aggressive recordings in the mids. So I like to listen to a lot of hard rock and heavy metal, there are some tracks where that just a little bit, and I do mean a little bit of, of above, above the rest of the frequencies energy that exists somewhere in that 2.5 kilohertz to 3 kilohertz range, created a, a mid-range harshness and glare here a little bit with, again, like electric guitars. Mastodon and Metallica stand out as like two bands where uh, that sort of thing happened uh, a fair amount with this headphone. So that is one issue with some music there, but for a lot of voices and for acoustic instruments and that sort of thing, I think the mid-range presentation here is pretty good, both from a, a frequency response standpoint and timbre, has a very natural timbre to it with a lot of those, those instruments. Okay, now, um, Sound staging is fairly big, wide. It's not overly huge. It's not small. I guess it's just kind of more, it doesn't stand out really being either big or small. Um, there are fairly good positional effects like imaging and all that, placing things in the sound field fairly well. Um, I, the separation between sonic images is not the strongest though. So it does a fairly good job of placing things, but it doesn't always do a fairly, you know, uh, an amazing job of putting space between those sonic images um, in there. The, um, let's come back to that bass punch and, and slam there a little bit, because I was really surprised by that with this headphone. Like, it hits pretty hard. Not quite Foztex level, maybe not quite Focal level, but boy, there is a fair amount of punch here. Okay, so that that stands out as an interesting feature of this headphone, which I, I'll circle back to that in a minute, because I think with the mid-range timbre being what it is, being mostly strong, but having a little bit of weakness with those electric guitars, and then also the physicality and the bass does a couple of interesting things in terms of like what kind of music this matches to. So I'll come back to that in a moment um, as well. Okay, um, so rounding out other technicalities, what's left? Like we have fairly good texturing uh, of the bass and, and that sort of thing. 
The resolution though is not particularly standout. It, it's not poorly resolving, but it's not, this is a ZMF trait, right? They tend not to focus on resolution. They are more about timbre and presentation. Um, and so that shows up here too, where the resolution is good, but it's not necessarily great. Okay, um, but I mean, because of that, it also just kind of has a more relaxed nature to it um, and f as far as a detail retrieval kind of presentation goes. All right, um, I mentioned all of those different amps um, that I tried a little bit ago. An interesting aspect of this headphone came out in that it doesn't change all that much from amp to amp. All of those amps that I named earlier sound different. Okay, they, they all have a little bit different character to them. This headphone it does change a little bit moving from amp to amp, but the amount to which it changes, the magnitude of that change, is on the smaller side of other headphones that I've heard recently, even cheaper ones on that. So it is, it's not like amp, what's the, what's the right word here? It's not like amp agnostic or amp apathetic. There's a better word that is escaping me at the moment. Okay, so I mean, it is affected by different amps, just not hugely so. So it is, it does a good job, if you will, of being itself moving from through different signal chains uh, in particular. Okay, um, so I thought that was interesting and all of that. Like the, the biggest thing I could tell you is like the, the Fonitor X throws a huge soundstage, enormous. And the soundstage here opened up a little bit on the Fonitor X. So you could tell like, like the staging gets bigger moving from like my Vio or the Ferrum Ore to that Fonitor X but not to the extent that a Hi-Fi man does, or the Auto zm 500 that I just have in does, or even like my, my Fostex TH-900 or anything like that. It doesn't, it doesn't change as much as those do. Okay. Coming back then to the music types that I, I mentioned there and the, the strengths of this headphone and like how it matches to music. I don't really recommend it if you listen to a lot of music that relies heavily on aggressive, distorted electric guitars. I think that is one area where the mid-range gets in the way a little bit. It's just a little bit too forward, a little bit too glary, can get a little, it can get fatiguing in there, okay? Um, for vocal music, this does very well. It does a good job of sounding fairly natural with vocals does a good job with harmonies in terms of separating out the different voices, but also blending them and you know, harmonizing them together well, um, and that sort of thing. It does a good job of separating instruments from voices and all of that, even when passages get busy, okay? But for whatever reason, that heavily distorted electric guitar sound that is you know, in a lot of heavy metal and all of that, uh, just gets a little bit too aggressive on this headphone and can become fatiguing quite quickly. I think. So, I think this headphone is better suited to more mellow acoustic music. It can still be busy, like there can still be a lot going on in it and it will handle it okay. Uh, but from a timbral perspective and, and keeping the frequency response, you know, reasonable and all of that, I think vocal and acoustic music is where it is most at home with those things. Now, that slam that I talked about, that macrodynamic impact here, also makes it a fun and interesting headphone for like EDM, hip hop, and like if you're a fan of Lindsey Sterling, okay, where she plays violin on top of like uh, an EDM dubstep kind of music. Like that kind of music becomes fun and interesting too, because there's just a lot of physicality and punch in there. Now, some of that stuff, particularly if it's electronic, digs way, way down in the bass, and this isn't gonna reach all the way down there. So if you like Hans Zimmer music and appreciate headphones that can reach all the way down into the depths, this one isn't quite there on that, but it's got enough bass slam that the impact of those genres that we're talking about here becomes a lot of fun. And then those genres also tend to not have a whole lot of aggressive, 
forward mid-range content that trips up the slight aggressiveness that happens in here with this headphone too. So those are my thoughts on matching these to music. Pad swapping. The, um, <clears throat> whatever these pads are, I think they are the BE squared uh, suede's. Yeah, or at least a suede hybrid, because we have some sort of leather material here and then suede we're at the point where we have head contact, okay? These opened up the sound stage a little bit, may give it a little bit bigger staging. I think that's because they are deeper, okay, this way. Um, so that, that happened there, uh, but I thought it, it, it messed with the frequency response a little bit. It brought a, a treble peak in there just a little bit more. There was a little bit more warmth to the sound, um, which was neither good nor bad, just a little bit different. But I think the mid-range also, that effect that I just told you about was a little bit worse. Not, not terribly, but just a little bit. Okay, so I do think that these stock pads worked better than these, um, whatever those are. So, but again, not huge changes, not huge changes. So these, they have a character and they just, they are what they are in large part, whether you talk about at least these two pads that I'm talking about here or different amps, different DACs, that sort of thing. So there is that. All right, uh, comparisons with other headphones. I have not heard all of the Virate. I heard a Virate closed and I have a review for that. I'll put that there. I don't know that the Virate closed that I heard was all of that representative of the VC line though, because it was one of the stabilized editions and the sound that I was getting from it and I had like four types of pads to try with that one. And with each pad, the sound that I was getting from it was not what I was being, what was being described to me by various other outlets. So I'm gonna have to take an incomplete on that one. But I think in terms of like resolution and all of that, this is probably right there with the, the Virates. Okay, um, we need to talk about this one again. This is the Hi Feynman HE1000 V2 that I have kept around for a while now as a personal reference. And this was a $3,000 headphone for most of its existence. It is now a $2,000 headphone. I don't know if 2,000 is just the new price or if that's still a limited time thing, but I pull this one out a lot to gauge where anything else that comes along, be it this or anything else, like where it should fit in like the price performance spectrum. Um, this one is going to stage, the sound staging is bigger, but the imaging and the separation, it just it handles spatial reproduction much better than the Atrium does. It's also more resolving, um, so you get a lot more micro detail and that sort of thing out of this, but it's still not detail forward. Now, tuning wise, it has more treble energy, so if you're treble sensitive, that could be an issue here. but. Overall technicalities, like the, the Atrium has more punch, more like mid-bass hit and impact than this one does. Um, there is a savory quality to some mid-range sounds here with the Atriums that this doesn't have, but I think from 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz, I would have to give the, 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 the total timbre um, quality to the Heck V2, AG1000 V2 over the Atrium as well. Um, just cause it's more consistently good where this one can be great sometimes and then just okay other times it, um, the AG1000 V2 is more consistent. But again, the Atrium has a savory quality to a lot of its sound, which I did a written review of the Icon a couple of years ago now, and I can link to that below. And I had much the same feeling where with acoustic music, with voices, and that sort of thing, like it just, it had a sound that was just savory and delicious through those mids. This reminds me a lot of that uh, in that regard, just with a little bit higher technical proficiency, um, but not as overall high as this, okay? So um, that's kind of my takeaway here with the Atrium. So yeah, let's, let's wrap this up here. ZMF Atrium, 2,500 US dollars absolutely beautiful the the zmf craftsmanship is here pride of ownership is high because they are beautiful and because they're handmade with real wood and all of that each one is unique 
And so every one that gets, goes out there is just a little bit different in terms of how it looks. And so again, there's a lot of pride of ownership in that. That is a very real thing. The tuning is like HD 650 like with a little bit more bass extension, not a ton, and a little bit more treble presence and extension, not a ton. There is some music that these sound great for. Again, I think more acoustic and vocal oriented music, and surprisingly, things like hip hop, EDM, uh, dubstep do really well on here too. But it's a little bit, there's just a little bit too much aggressiveness and glare in the, somewhere in the mid range that makes a lot of distorted electric guitars not work so well. So a lot of hard rock and heavy metal, not quite, not quite this thing's wheelhouse, okay? So keep that in mind there as well. But overall, very enjoyable headphone, very enjoyable presentation. It doesn't have the resolution of something like the HE1000 V2, but it, again, it has a, it has a savory quality to its sound, particularly with voices and acoustic instruments that is just kind of a ZMF trait on some of their stuff that is really hard to match. And so if that's what you're looking for, this can be a really, really good option. All right. So I am Wave Theory. This has been my review of the ZMF Atrium. Thanks for watching. Please do check out my PayPal and my Patreon and do a like and a subscribe and all of those fun things. And as always, enjoy the music.